would come the storm on Galilee. He who set the morning lap free. He who opened mercy's door for me. In compassion beat the calm.
Praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this worship service. We bless your name for bringing us together on the Lord's day for rest, for refreshing, for revival, for spiritual impartation, for preparation for the week ahead of us. We are asking the Lord all you intend to lavish on us, to give us, to fulfill your plan and your purpose for bringing us together this day of worship in your presence. We pray, Lord, you'll fulfill everything in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you'll keep us awake as you speak to us by your Spirit in the Scriptures in Jesus' name. Grant us all the strength we need so that this coming week and this coming month and the rest of the year will be lead to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, God bless you. You can sit down. Once again, I welcome you to our worship service today. Coming together in deeper life on a Sunday like this, every Sunday actually, is a memorable time. A time never to be forgotten that God himself does something in your life that will be unforgettable. And this day will not be an exception. I'll bless your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at First Peter chapter 2. I read verse 2. I read verse 5. And then verses 9 and 10. Verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. Growth begins after you are born. You are born again. You are born into the kingdom. You are born anew. You are born from heaven. Your growth can only begin after you are born into the kingdom. And you understand, there are many people that come to church, just like many people that go to other churches, and they hear the word, and they sing the songs, and they walk along and move along with the people of God, but they are not born again. They have not made a definite commitment unto the Lord. And they have not said, on this day, I forsake the past. I take Jesus as my personal Savior. And from now on, I'm going to live as a believer. You are born when you take that step. You might come for 10 years to the church. You might come for 20 years in the church. If you are not born again, you cannot grow. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. There's a desire in your heart if you are born again. That's why we find many believers, especially when you are born again and you come into the kingdom, you are running to the Bible study. You are running to the revival time and any chance you have to hear the word of God, you want to use that opportunity and be open to the word of God because you are born again, you want to grow. There's a desire in your heart as newborn babes desire. The sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. The preacher, the pastor, the shepherd, the leader may have the desire to teach and desire to preach and desire to expound the word of God. He may do it from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation, and he may do it every time 
faithfully and obediently but except you have the desire to grow you'll not desire the sincere milk of the word and the passion and the purpose and the perseverance of the preacher will mean nothing to you i pray you'll benefit from the preaching of the word in jesus name look at verse 5 ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house think about that a single block does not make a house a simple a single stone does not make a house a single believer does not make a house you know the purpose of the lord you know the plan of the lord it is that you as a stone lively stone for the grace of god brings life into you and you become a lively stone you are built together with others there are some people they are lone rangers i believe in the lord i believe in the bible i can read the bible for myself i'm intelligent enough to read the bible to understand what it says and then to follow through and i have all these bible helps and i have all these commentaries and over the internet i can stay in my house and i can be a good believer not really the plan of the lord is not that you'll be an internet christian television christian radio christian newspaper christian media christian and not show up in the church and be built together a spiritual house and priesthood so that you can offer your sacrifices your praises and your life to the lord as you hear the word of god please understand that standing alone reading alone praying alone worshiping alone without the community of believers doesn't make you fulfill what the lord has appointed for you he also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ you see that what you do how you live is only acceptable to god by jesus christ however good you may be however educated you may be however learned you may be and however philanthropic you may be all those works are not acceptable until they pass through the hands of jesus christ number one as newborn babes we desire the sincere milk of the world that's what makes us grow as god understands growth not only that we're built together a spiritual house a spiritual temple so that we don't think we can lead to the fullness of the christian life by ourselves in isolation without association with the body of christ the local church look at verse 9 but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that he should show forth you see that he wants us to show something forth you are born again you are a child of god you are redeemed and you are now justified it says you show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people look at that in time past were not a people in time past before you knew the lord the lord did not regard you as a person going to heaven it's like that man that jesus healed and he touched his eyes and he asked him to look up and he looked up and he said 
what do you see? He said, I see men walking as trees. I know they are men because they are moving, but they look like trees. They are not complete. And we were not a people regarded by the Lord, complete in the Lord, and useful in the kingdom. We were not a people before we knew the Lord as a personal Savior. That's why it says, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Mercy for salvation. Mercy for a renewed life. Mercy for a change of life. And I pray that what God is expecting of us, as he describes in verse 9, will be fulfilled in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Did the church say amen? amen? Today we're looking at the message, the peculiar privileges of God's peculiar people. God's peculiar people have privileges, and their peculiar privileges only meant for the peculiar people of God. The peculiar privileges of God's peculiar people. Three things we're looking at. Number one, his peculiar provision for sons and saints in Christ. His peculiar provision, the provision of the Lord, the provision of the, of the Savior, the provision of a faithful God for peculiar people in his kingdom. Is peculiar provision for sons and saints in Christ. Point number two, the powerful picture of steadfast saints in Christ. Saints who are stable, saints who are solid, saints who are steadfast like a stone, built into a spiritual temple. And that stone remains there in its position and is built into the spiritual temple. It's a saint, but it's steadfast. That's the picture the Lord is giving us as we look at those verses, verses 4 to 8. The powerful picture of steadfast saints in Christ. Point number three, the practical priesthood. When it says we're royal priests of priesthood, what does that mean? A holy nation. What does that imply? And a peculiar people, what do we do? As people who are the priesthood of the Lord, the priests of the Lord, the practical priesthood of shining saints in Christ. We shine for him. We live for him. And our light shines in a dark world because it calls us out of darkness into its marvelous light. The practical priesthood of shining saints in Christ. Number one, the peculiar provision for sons and saints in Christ. I'm coming to First Peter chapter 2. Reading from verse 1, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the world, that she may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You have tasted the grace of God, the grace that brought salvation has appeared unto you. You embraced that, you accepted that, you turned away from your past, and you come into the new life in Christ, and you say, this Jesus is my Savior, and he'll be my Savior forever. And you turn away from all the darkness of the past. And you turn to Jesus, the light of the world. 
he says, I'm standing at your door and I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. And so he came in, he forgave your sin by grace. He gave you salvation by grace. He wrote your name in heaven by grace. He touched your life and transformed your life by grace. He turned you into a new creature in Christ all by grace. If ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, then lay aside all malice. Underline the word all there. There are different kinds of malice. Malice, quiet. Malice, smiling. Malice, appearing innocent. Malice, appearing friendly. All forms of malice. Some people have malice, they are angry. Other people have malice and they shout. Other people have malice and they smile. Other people have malice and they do some things. You'll not know they have malice. Whatever kind of malice, empty your heart of all malice. Lay aside all malice and all guile. Guile means deception. Guile means lying. And all forms of guile, all forms of uh, deception, all forms of lying, the one will lie on paper. And the one will lie with the mouth, and with the one will lie with action, and the one will lie by just sitting still and doing nothing, and yet we're deceiving. It says, lay aside all guile, all deception, and hypocrisies. You see that in the plural, which means again, uh, there are many kinds of hypocritical actions. And it says, now you're a believer, lay aside. Everything that is hypocritical and all envies, you see envy there in the plural, it says they take different forms and different shapes. It says lay them aside and all evil speakings. You see that in the plural too. Speaking evil about the government, that's part of it. Speaking evil about the leadership in the country. That's part of it. Speaking evil about uh, the leadership in the state. That's part of it. Speaking evil about the local government leaders. That's part of it. Speaking evil about the leadership in the church. That's part of it. And speaking evil about your neighbor. All kinds of evil speaking uh, lay aside. If we're going to make progress in the kingdom of God, there are things to lay aside. For the babes, there are things to lay aside. For the believers, there are things to lay aside. For preachers like me, like you, there are things to lay aside. If we're going to grow, everybody is to grow. It's not only the babe that is to grow. The believer is to grow. They must lay aside something. And also, the people who are children of God and you've been there for a long time as a believer you lay something aside in fact every time you come to the presence of God and it shows you his own demand and it shows you in very clear terms this is what he wants of his sons and his daughters you compare that with your life and then you know there's something to lay aside and the preacher, the pastor, the shepherd, where well, you're leading the people of God, and uh, people, if they have the boldness and the courage to talk to you and say, Sir, we appreciate your ministry, but this is kind of decreasing your effectiveness in ministry. All the people, they don't have the boldness to come straight. And they use guile, even though they use guile, they are passing a message across. They are asking a question at the time of the scripture. They make up a story and they say this and they say this and they say that. And they are trying to get at all so our leaders, even though they are not straightforward. They are passing a message across. And if we get the message, it's so style, leave him in the hands of God. He has guile, he has deception, and he has a make-believe story. 
but he's getting at something god will deal with the liars leave that alone but when that message comes to you that you know that you in the leadership you need to get this corrected and get that corrected lay aside you have something to lay aside everyone in the church and as you come here today the lord is calling upon you and the lord is saying if you are going to grow i'm looking at, at people that are going to grow i said i'm looking at people that are going to grow and look up at me here have you seen me i will continue to grow i said it for myself i will continue to grow and whatever i see whatever i feel whatever you do whatever other people do i remind myself that i as a pastor must grow and therefore there is something for me to lay aside i will see it every time you talk every time you ask questions and every time you tell a story and every time you make a testimony every time you see anything i will know okay they are talking to me i need to lay that aside lay that aside so that i will grow you will grow you will lay something aside and you will grow in jesus name i'm coming to hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 and i'm reading here from verse 1 hebrews chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 1 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight that's not talking to babes alone it's talking to all believers and here paul the apostle writing to the hebrew christians he said let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us you know what he's telling us he said if you look back at all these clouds of witnesses and you read chapter 11 from verse 1 all to verse 40 and you're wondering there's some names i know in the old testament and i thought they were believers and i thought they were god's favored people I can't find their names here. What happened to them? They didn't lay aside the weight that did easily beset them. They didn't lay aside the sin that so easily beset them. Are you looking for Balaam? You'll not find him in the, in the hall of faith. Why? Balaam did not lay aside his covetousness there was something for him to lay aside and the lord said balaam don't go don't have anything to do with those people of moab and balak and then those people came again he had not laid that thing aside and he said god can i go he said you want to go you can go he didn't lay that aside you remember Saul, you don't find his name in the chapter that talks about the faith of those Old Testament worthies. You know why? He was impatient. He should have laid that aside. He didn't. And because the thing he should lay aside, he did not lay aside. He couldn't make it. You remember Esau? He was the firstborn of Jacob. And Jacob, sorry, the firstborn of Isaac, he and Jacob had the privilege of the birthright. But there was something for him to lay aside. There must be endurance in the life of the believer. And when he was hungry, he saw, lay that aside. But he couldn't, he did it. And he said, Give me of your pottage. And he said, and Jacob said, you'll do something in exchange for the pottage. You want to please the flesh? You want to satisfy the flesh? 
I'll make you do it, but sell me your birthright. He said, what will the birthright do to me? He didn't lay aside his tummy. And because of that, look at that. Have you remembered Absalom? You can't find his name in Hebrews chapter 11. He had something. He was running at something. And he was gunning at something. He wanted the place of David by all means. Even before David died, Absalom laid this aside. Even though he had been disciplined, how? He killed his stepbrother. And then he ran away. He was in exile for a few years. Eventually, he did what he could do. He came back. Even after coming back from that exile, from that national discipline, he didn't lay that aside. That thing was still in the heart. That's why they couldn't make it to chapter 11 and they couldn't make it to heaven. It's not only for babes, it's for every one of us. If we're going to make it to this chapter of faith, unforgettable, and to the people, to be among the people that will live eternally with the Lord, there is something to lay aside. You remember what Jesus said when he said, Remember Lord's wife. Lord's wife, she saw the angels. And the angels held to her hand and to the hands of Lot and two daughters of theirs get out of this city for the Lord is going to destroy the city. But there was something in the heart of Lot's wife. All the gold, all the silver, all the entertaining crowd, all the Sodomites, all those people that were there in the city of Sodom, she had an attachment with them, association with them. She should have laid that aside. No, she couldn't. And because she didn't lay that aside, she became a pillar of salt. There's one man that was notoriously bad, notoriously evil. And Elijah, the prophet of God, came to him. And when he saw Elijah, he said, Have you found me, O oh, my enemy? What's his name? Ahab. And then Elijah de delivered the message of God to him. Once in his life, he became sober. He became penitent. And then he walked softly in the sight of the Lord. And God told Elijah, See Ahab, how he has now walked softly. I will not bring the evil that I threatened, I'll forgive him. I'll not bring it in his own time. If his sons follow after him, then I'll bring the evil in the time of the son. But you know, Ahab was only temporarily sober. He didn't lay aside what he had been doing. And the word of God says, his wife was the one that always pushed him, always pushed him. He sold himself to doing evil because of his wife. Jezebel did not lay aside the evil in her hand, and Ahab did not permanently lay aside what the Lord was correcting. That's why they perished. Come to the New Testament, and you see one of the twelve, his name is Judas, and Jesus warned him over and over of that covetousness. One of you will betray me. One of you will sell me into the hands of the Gentiles, of the soldiers. Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? And Judas mustered up the courage. Is it I? And he said, yes, you have said it. You are. That thing you are doing if you do it, it was better you were not born. It was better a millstone was hung on your neck. And then you perish because that is going to heal, lead you to hell fire straight. But you know, Judas, he did not lay aside 
that sin that was a real problem. What the Lord is telling us is, you're a babe, you're a believer, you're a minister, you're a worker, you're a preacher, you're an overseer, lay aside. The sin that does so easily beset you. Demas was a companion of Paul the Apostle. He had enough to take him to heaven. He had enough of the holiness without which we shall not see the Lord. But he did not take heed. Demas has loved this present world. He's gone to Thessalonica. We must lay all those sins aside. This day, if there's any sin, delay your journey. If there's any sin derailing you from your journey to heaven, you lay them aside in Jesus' name. Look at that chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Anything that slows you down, you lay aside. Anything that is going to cut short your journey and not allow you to get to heaven, you will lay aside. Anything that is taking your attention away from the Lord, and you were fully committed to the Lord before, but now it's decreasing your commitment, consecration, and total dedication to the Lord. Today, you will lay aside in Jesus' name. Come to, come to uh, chapter 2, verse 2 of First Peter. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. Desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. You desire the milk, you take the milk, so you can be off the bottle of milk. That's how to grow. The baby that is born starts with milk and takes the milk and takes the milk. And when that baby grows up, He's able to drop the bottle of milk and then is able to have meat. We're told in Hebrews chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 5, reading from verse 11. Of whom we have many things to say and had to be uttered, seen ye are dull of hearing. They were not growing, those Hebrew Christians. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that won't teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. What he was telling them, what Peter was telling the people. The same thing the Apostle Paul was telling the Hebrew Christians. He said, you're not growing. You still have need of milk. You've been there now for how many years? And you're still taking milk. And any time we step up a little and we get to keep the strong meat of the world, then I cannot hear that. I cannot understand that. But the Lord is saying we ought to grow from being a baby to being a real child of God as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to your former manners, but in all conversation, all manner of life, 
in all areas of your conduct that you will be matured as a believer and you'll be holy because I am holy. Not only that, that you understand self-denial, that you are able to live a life, a life that stands, the winds may blow, blow and there may be some noise, you know, babies, they're easily jolted, easily surprised or distracted. And those who are children, infants, noise in the night. There's something under the bed. No, baby, there's nothing under the bed. And there's something you know, over the window. No, baby, there's nothing you know, over the windows. You see, when people are very young, physically and spiritually, in every wind, there's a tornado. In every storm, there's a demon. In every difficulty and challenge, there are enemies coming from the village. Grow up and understand all those things that babies and children and infants are afraid of. When you grow up and you understand what it means to deny yourself, those things mean nothing. And then you concentrate on the race that is set before you. That's why he tells us there that we grow up. And when you grow up, you're able to take the strong meat of the world. First Corinthians, I'm looking at First Corinthians chapter 3. In First Corinthians chapter 3, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. But as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Corinthian Christians were speaking in tongues, they were interested in this, interested in that. Meanwhile, a lot of corrupt things were taking place, as we find in chapter 5. Meanwhile, a lot of things were taking place, taking themselves to court you know, as a result of uh, grievances and uh, whatever it is among them. We find that in chapter 6. Meanwhile, their marriages and families were not all right, as we find in chapter 7, where they kept on speaking in tongues. And meanwhile, in chapter 8, they were eating things, sacrificed to idols. And uh, meanwhile, they were still speaking in tongues. And then uh, we come to chapter 10. Then the same thing, uh, the story of the children of Israel who left Egypt and were going to Canaan and they could not make it. They were repeating that same story. And meanwhile, in chapter 11, they were taking the Lord's Supper on what really, and yet they were babes. That's what it means to grow up, that all those actions, all those activities, all the lifestyle that makes us look like babes after we proclaim to be saved, proclaim to be sanctified, and we pretend to be speaking in tongues, repeating the same tongue, 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 all the time, and all these various things, corruptions, forms of corruption, are still in their church. It says, I couldn't speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto babe, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. They couldn't take the meat of the word of God, although they prided themselves as seed, they have grown as tall as to heaven. It says, I fed you with milk and not with meat. For he that too, ye were not able to bear it, does the meat neither, yet now are ye able. I pray we'll be able. I will be able. We'll be able in Jesus' name. We'll grow up. We'll grow strong. And we'll grow nearer and nearer every time to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm reading here from verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man till we all come. That's growth. 
till we all come there's a process of growing and it says till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine you know there are some people they cannot differentiate truth from error they cannot differentiate sound doctrine from false doctrine they've been coming to the church for 10 20 25 30 40 years they're still babes they are tossed to and fro they hear somebody saying something from a verse of scripture and the fellow goes off on a tangent and they're shaking and they don't know what to believe again and it says the process of growth will make us so solid will make us so sound that whatever anybody says you'll say where you're coming from look at this in the word of god look at that in the word of god you'll be able to stand when you are growing i pray you will stand that henceforth will be no more children tossed to a fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wage to deceive but speaking the truth in love tell me what follows may grow up may grow up into him in all things which is the head even christ and it talks about testing that the lord is gracious testing that the lord I said mercy on you and your blood you have heard you are partaking of the grace of God Hebrews chapter 6 reading from verse 5 Hebrews chapter 6 verse 5 and I've tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come you have tasted of the word of salvation and the power for salvation you have tasted the word of sanctification and the power that produces that sanctification in your life. You have had conviction and the conviction you have produces courage in your life. You have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Peculiar provision for sons and daughters sons and saints sons and servants in christ i come to point number two the powerful picture of steadfast saints in christ see the picture the peter the apostle is giving to us i mean in verse four and then verse five first peter chapter two i read verse four it says to whom are coming it's talking about Christ as unto a living stone that's Christ a living stone this allowed indeed of men but chosen of God and precious that's the picture he had of Christ is a living stone but look at verse 5 he also he has spoken about Christ as Savior Christ our Lord he has spoken about Christ, the lively stone, the living stone. He has spoke, spoken about Christ, the chosen precious stone. That's going to talk about you. It's going to talk about me. He's going to talk about the believers. Verse 5. He also has lively stones. Think about that. He, Christ, living stone. And you, the believer, lively stone. Do you see the similarity there? He passes his life unto you. And because he passes his life unto you, you become lively because he is living. You become identified with him. 
he died for you and then he rose again for your justification and because he rose again you now become alive in christ he is the living stone and you are a lively stone let's follow the through that jesus christ the living stone we're looking at isaiah chapter 28 isaiah chapter 28 i'm reading from verse 16. you see how christ is referred to in verse 16 he says therefore the says the lord god behold i lay in zion for a foundation a stone a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation he that believeth shall not make his that is he lays him down as the only one that can bring us salvation and lead us to life eternal and it says you believe on him a transformation will take place in your life and you'll become a lively stone acts of the apostles chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 acts chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 here it tells us, it says in verse 11, this is the stone, not another. The one that had been prophesied about in the Old Testament, this is the stone. The one that will set up a kingdom and his kingdom will know no end, this is the stone. The one the Pharisees and Sadducees rejected, to their own doom, to their own damnation. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the hedge of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. This is the stone. Neither is there salvation in any other. Neither is there justification in any other neither is there redemption in any other neither is there forgiveness in any other to get to heaven he is the way the truth and the life there's no salvation there's no justification there's no redemption there's no forgiveness in any other neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven in any country every country is under heaven and there is no spiritual, religious figure that can replace Christ. There is no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. When he said this is the stone, what, it, what was he referring to? It was referring to Psalm 118. Psalm 118 reading from verse 19 psalm 118 reading from verse 19 in verse 19 open to me the gates of righteousness i will go into them and i will praise the lord this gate of the lord unto which the righteous shall enter I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become, tell me, tell me out aloud, my salvation, after mentioning salvation, look at verse 22, the stone which the builders refused is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing it is marvelous in our eyes your salvation will be marvelous in the eyes of everybody that's the stone and even though the builders rejected on the final day they're going to find out is the final judge the king of the kingdom Daniel chapter 2 in Daniel chapter 2, 
We're reading from verse 35. There was the iron and the clay. Let's go back to verse 34. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold, the broke into pieces together and became like chaff, the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. God Almighty revealed all the successive kingdoms of the world to Nebuchadnezzar. But then the Lord revealed to him that a stone came out of the mountain and was thrown at that image. And all the kingdoms collapsed. There was no place for them again. And that stone became a mountain that filled the whole earth. Look at the interpretation in verse 44, verse 45. And in the days of these kings, shall the king shall the god of heaven set up a kingdom i'll be part of that kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be led to all the people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms all earthly kingdoms and it shall stand forever for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and, it and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what shall come to pass hereafter in the last days. The dream is certain. And interpretation is sure. Amen. Amen. He is the living stone. And he's going to have a kingdom. The kingdom that will abide forever and ever. But now we believers are lively stones. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5. We believers are like him. We identified with him. We live the way he would have been living if he won us right now. Because he is the living stone and we are lively stones. Verse 5, he also, as lively stones, a built up a spiritual house. We're not a stone rolling about that gathers no moss were built into a spiritual house. We're not jumping from church to church. We're built into a spiritual house. We're not wondering about this Sunday we're here, that Sunday we're there, that Sunday we're there. We are built into a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer all spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. God help you to be stable. God help you to be steadfast. And you know, sometimes people are like, why were you not in church today? Uh, you know, somebody, a friend of mine from the office is having naming ceremony for his child in their church. I went there, stone, stable, built up. What if one of the stones or one of the blocks in this building, you know, gets itself out? They go for naming ceremony somewhere. Another stone comes out another Sunday and is gone for car washing somewhere. 
and another person comes out is gone for wedding somewhere another one comes out and they're not regular when we are brought in as believers the lord wants us to be solid believers stable believers steadfast believers unmovable that we know that i am there i am there you'll be there in jesus name somebody coming to church having his bible in his hand and then on the side of the road while coming there's a microphone blaring somewhere and then it looks that direction some people gather and they're shouting clapping hands they're having something maybe a crusade and it says let me go and see what they're doing there that one is not stable that one is not dependable that one you cannot trust it's not trustworthy but the believers whatever noise they're hearing whatever is going on here or there that's my place that's my church on sunday i must be there that's what we're talking about as lively stones that will become like real believers who are steadfast and stable dependable i will be dependable i will be trustworthy i will be stable i will be steadfast let me hear you i will be steadfast you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer all spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Your service will be acceptable. Your offering will be acceptable. First Corinthians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 3, looking at verse 9. For we are God's, we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Ye are God's building. When he brings you into the kingdom, when he brings you to Christ, and when he brings you to the church, he builds you with other believers in that local church. In verse 10, according to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For the foundation can no man lay than that that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 6. We're reading from verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. What? Know ye not that, she, uh, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Christ lives on the inside of the believer. And the Holy Ghost abides in the heart of the believer. And Jesus hears every conversation. Jesus knows every action. And Jesus knows everywhere you go. And the Holy Ghost knows everything to you. What you think, what you say, how you act, how, because jesus is resident in the heart of the believer the holy ghost is resident in the heart of the believer we are the temples of the holy ghost which is in you which you have of god and ye are not your own ye are not your own for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which belong to God, which are God's. In First Peter chapter 2, reading from verses 9 and 10, the practical priesthood of shining saints in Christ. The practical priesthood of shining saints 
in Christ. What peculiar provision and privilege. What a powerful picture of what we are, who we are supposed to be, how we are supposed to live. And now we have the practical action of the holy royal priesthood as we belong to the Lord. First Peter chapter 2 verses 9 and 10. But she a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, ye are, ye are. It says, in the past we were not the righteous people of God. In the past we were not the holy people of God. In the past we were not the dependable people of God. In the past, we were not the people of God reaching in the book of life. But now, look at verse 10, which in the past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy in the past, but now have obtained mercy. Mercy for salvation. Now you have obtained mercy. Mercy for forgiveness. Mercy for cleansing. Mercy for a new and a renewed life. It says now you have mercy. And because of that, you are now a chosen generation. Chosen. Look at Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. No man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life. No man that lives. No man that goes into the office, goes into the marketplace, into places and communities in our land, and almost everyone is corrupt. And it says, No man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Chosen him to be a soldier. Chosen him. He has chosen us. And the reason for the choice is not to be a yes man. Yes man. Carry that sin. Yes man. Smoke this sin. Yes sir. And then take that. Yes madam. Go and call that person for me. Yes, I will. You are not a yes man. A soldier is the one to stand and to stand this ground and to say, no, I will not do that. And if you don't learn to say no in your office, when they call you to do something outside your area of operation, and it's fraud, it's corruption, it's evil, and you cannot say no, you don't understand, you are chosen to be a soldier and you are to have backbone, and you are to have strength, and you are to live an uncompromising life. If you are chosen, and you know you are chosen, no man that worries, no woman that worries entangles herself with the fears of this life, that she may please him, the Lord, who has chosen him to be a soldier. Not only that, it says, we're a royal priesthood, we're a royal priesthood. You are kingly, and then you are only a priest, also a priest of the Lord. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On, on such, the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and priests of Christ and shall reign royal, royal, and shall reign with him a thousand years. If you know you are royal, if you know you are a priest of the Lord, it says you are blessed and you are holy. You are blessed because you are holy. You are set apart because you are holy. You partake in this privilege of being a priest peculiarly unto the Lord. 
you are a chosen generation, you are a royal priesthood, you are a holy nation. You are a holy nation. We are looking at Luke chapter 1 verse 74. Ma, uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 74 and verse 75. The Lord has the strength to make us holy. He has the power to make us holy. He has the provision to make you holy. You'll be holy in Jesus' name. How is it and what happens to somebody hearing about holiness and holiness and holiness and he prays and he seeks the Lord and he cries, Lord, I want to be holy. And he really meant it. He wanted to be holy. And then after the prayer, he goes out of church. He goes back to his family. Or she goes back to her family. She goes back to her place of work. Or he goes to his shop, mechanic shop. Or he goes to his office. He has prayed about holiness in the church. What happens now? As he gets to society. And that is the place to manifest that stage and that experience of holiness. But now he cannot be holy. Why? Fear. He's afraid. What will they say? What will they do? How will they act? What pressure are they going to put on me? He's afraid. And every prayer you pray, if that fear is there, the prayer will be neutralized. It will mean nothing. You pray for salvation and you claim to be saved and then you get back home to your husband, to your wife, to live the life fear will not allow you. If that fear is not cancelled, you cannot live the life of holiness. But thank God, I will be holy. If you are going to be holy, say it well. You know, the first step as we go out is to understand Christ lives on the inside of me. And Christ has commanded me, this is the way to go. The Holy Ghost lives on the inside of me, and the Holy Ghost is directing me, this is the way to go. And I love Christ more than I love them. I fear Christ more than I fear them. I'm going to obey Christ more than I'm going to obey them. If you don't put Christ as number one, the Holy Ghost as number one, if you put all those people as number one, whoever they are, fear will not allow you to be holy. But thank God from today you will be holy. Luke chapter 1 verse 74 verse 75 that he would grant unto us that we been delivered out of the hands of our enemies tell me tell me might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him how long all the days of our life and it's made us peculiar people peculiar people how does that happen titus chapter 2 verse 13 and verse 14 titus chapter 2 verses 13 and 14 looking for that blessed hope you know people become peculiar because they're always watching christ might come today I want to be ready. I don't want to be found doing anything, saying anything, acting out anything that Christ will not want to see when he comes. The people who are rapture ready, the people who are ready for heaven at any time, every time, they are conscious of heaven wherever they are. Money? No, they are conscious of heaven more. Title? They are conscious of heaven more. Position, they are conscious of heaven more. Even happiness, happiness on earth, they are conscious of heaven more. They are always looking, and it says looking 
for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from, tell me, all iniquity and purify. This is something that he does. It's not, all, it's not what you do by yourself. He does it. He redeems us from all iniquity. And when Jesus redeems, he does it well. Anything he does, he does it. You can see the evidence. And then to purify. He is the one that purifies us. And when Christ purifies, you can see this is what he has done. And purify unto himself. A peculiar people, zealous of good works. Having done that, he's done that in your life, he's done that in your heart. You now go out and then you have something to show for what Christ has done. You show forth his praises. You shine forth his glory. Philippians chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. In the midst of a corrupt nation, crooked nation, perverse nation, you know, ye shine as lights in the world. You know, some people, most churchgoers in our land, and some people who come to our church here deep alive, they come on Sunday, and when they go to work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they are part of the crookedness in the world. They are part of the corruption in the world. That's not why we're saved. He saved us to be different. He saved us to be peculiar. He saved us to distinguish ourselves from the people of the world. That no matter their authority and no matter their stature, no matter their compelling posture, we stand our ground and we're living for Christ in this perverse and corrupt and crooked nation. Among whom shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ that have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. We are called out of darkness. I said we're called out of darkness. Say it for yourself. I'm called out of darkness. Say it again. Live like that every time. Live like that every time. Your work, your office. Make sure that you're living in such a way people can tell. You're called out of darkness. Acts chapter 26. Verse 18, Acts chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 18 to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God. If you're a real child of God, you're not coming under the power of Satan, under the authority of Satan, into occultism, because you're looking for money into secret society because we're looking for something else it says the power of satan is broken away from your life that she may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them who are sanctified by faith that is in me out of darkness into the light I'll walk in the light. I'll live in the light. I'll do everything I do in the light. No more darkness. Somebody there, no more darkness. In Jesus' name in your life. First John chapter 1 verse 5. It says this then 
is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say, if we testify, if we confess, if we profess that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Let me read it for your understanding. If we say we're born again and we're deeper light members and walk in darkness, we lie and do not do and do not the truth. If we say we're ministers, we're members of a Bible believing church and we have fellowship with God and we have fellowship with believers and still walk in darkness you lie and do not the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light believer if you walk in the light no secret act no work behind the curtain nothing like they must not know this please i go to deeper life don't mention it when you send a deeper life member please I have a great position in our church deeper life don't allow them to hear this one that means you're a hypocrite you're living a life that's in darkness i pray god will deliver everyone like that in jesus name jesus said whatever i tell you and whatever you do get ready to broadcast it over the house tops and whatever you do let it be something that will be known if you're doing something you know, that you think that someone anyone in particular must not know this must not see this you are not living to the privilege of a real child of God. You are living in secrecy. You are living in darkness. Or maybe you are living in pride. That makes you to do that. And yet you don't want it known. If we walk in the light. As he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. Uh, you know, there are people that think we should be in fellowship with everyone. They say, Pastor, why don't you fellowship with this? I can't tell you, but I need to walk in the light. If he wants to walk in the light, let him come along. We'll have fellowship together. Pastor, why don't you relate with this? I can't tell you that. But you know, I need to walk in the light. And if he is walking in darkness, if she is walking in darkness, I will not change and compromise with him in darkness and fall down and go low and go and walk in the dungeon of his darkness. He will come out of darkness if he cherishes my fellowship. If he cherishes your fellowship, he will come out of darkness and then he'll be ready to walk in the light and we'll walk in the light together in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. If we walk in the light, make it personal, if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, then you and I have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from some of our sins from all sin it will happen it has happened already we live in righteousness or live in holiness we'll walk in the light and walk in the freedom of the children of god in jesus name first peter chapter 2 verse 1 Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, envies, and evil speakings, 
as newborn babes, as renewed believers, desire the sincere milk of the world that she may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a lively stone is allowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up, the Lord will build you up, will build us up each a spiritual house and an holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth, shine forth the praises of him was called you out of darkness into his marvelous light and the church said amen, amen. we're going out today to live in newness of life you're going home you're going to your work tomorrow you're going to your market tomorrow you're going to your offices tomorrow you're going to your community anywhere you go now you're going to live a different life a peculiar life a shining life, a life that shines forth the light and the glory of God. And people will see you, that Christ lives in you, the Holy Ghost abides in you. And the light of truth, the light of the Word of God is shining forth and beaming forth through your life. It will shine farther and farther unto the glorious day in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and take that to the Lord in prayer. Not praying as usual, but praying in an uncommon way that, Lord, I want all this to be reflected in my life. I don't just want to be somebody coming to church and reading the Bible and hearing messages and doing all these things, and yet it's not shining forth and making, it's, uh, making evident transformation through my life. It will make an impact in your life. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord. It is time.